Hi, welcome to the Ayurveda for Life show. My name is Nadia Andreeva, and today we have an amazing guest, Felicia Tomasco. And Felicia has been practicing yoga and Ayurveda for over 20 years, and now she integrates the knowledge of yoga and Ayurveda with her training as a registered nurse. She's also the editor-in-chief of LA Yoga Magazine, and um, she serves on the board of directors of the California Association of Ayurvedic Medicine and the National Ayurvedic Medical Association. So Felicia has um, done a lot of work in the field of Ayurveda and yoga, and um, we met in person at the NAMA conference um, a few months ago, and Felicia has such an incredible wealth of knowledge that I was really looking forward to talking with you about Ayurveda and how you implement Ayurveda in your daily living. So the first question um, is, how did you start using Ayurveda? How did Ayurveda come into your life? Well, for me, I think like many people, Ayurveda came into my life first through yoga. I had started seeking out yoga and meditation when I was still a teenager, when I was in high school. I had a fascination with the writings of Emerson and Thoreau and that type of philosophy. I was fascinated by Eastern religions. I was, I got out every possible book I could on yoga at the library. I would seek out meditation centers. So it was something that I was drawn to from a very young age. When I was in college, I started taking actual yoga classes for the very first time and was introduced to more of the practice. And then I was traveling and I needed a book to read on an airplane. And I randomly in a bookstore picked out Deepak Chopra. Chopra's Perfect Health, and that was not long after the book was published, and I was fascinated. By the end of my airplane trip, I felt like someone had handed me all of the answers to all of the questions in the universe, that someone had just dropped this in my lap. And not even a week later, I was in a health food store in Boulder, Colorado, where I was living and going to school at the time, and I saw a flyer for an introduction to Ayurveda class, and I just had to sign up for it. So I rearranged my schedule, signed up for the class learned all of this information and have never looked back. It's been something that when I started, when I knew it existed, I wanted to know more. And it's part of my daily routine at this point in time, more than 20 years later. Wow, that's a really cool story. Um, so let's talk about your daily routine. So how, um, how do you implement Ayurveda in your daily life? Now, considering that you have such a wealth of knowledge and have been practicing it for so long, um, how do you bring it into your daily living? Well, I also, my daily life is a little bit busy. I teach, but I also am one of the owners and the editor-in-chief at LA Yoga and Find Bliss magazines, and our company is the Bliss Network. So any day I'm juggling about a million balls of fire, and I find that the thing that helps me on a daily basis is the teachings, the sadhana, the practice, the daily routine, um, that is emphasized in Ayurveda. And some days it comprises more of my days, others less, but I do turn to my meditation practice. It's something I do when I first wake up in the morning. I usually meditate myself to sleep. I try to meditate at some point during the day. Utilizing pranayam practices is something I do throughout the day. And in fact, when I was in nursing school, it would be something when I would have breaks in the hospital, I would do a pranayam practice. Or before I would sit down to take an exam, I actually would sit in the exam seat and do pranayam and breathing. And sometimes when I have long days where I'm at the computer and in meetings and, and juggling a lot, I try to remember to just bring myself back to the breath as often as possible. But in addition to that, I utilize food, I utilize herbs, I utilize tea, I drink different varieties of Tulsi tea or different herbal tea throughout the day. I make sure to stay hydrated. I use oil because as we know, Ayurveda is in love with oil. So whether it's nose oil, um, self-massage, I've had days where I've done self-massage morning and night to try to wow. maintain or define that balance. I utilize aromatherapy. I utilize my yoga practice. Um, I utilize hot water with lemon. For me, it's, it's everything throughout the day. What are the tactics? What are the techniques that I can use that are simple that help bring me back to center? Because as we know, whether we have a busy life or a slow life, and it seems like all of us have busy lives these days, we always need to come back to center. And that's what the practices do for me. And it's a reminder, too, that as Ayurveda says, everything has the potential to be medicinal. So from the clothes I put on to the music that I listen to in my car to the way that I sit down and take a moment before eating, all of those things help me 
maintain, cultivate, and enjoy that balance even when times when it feels pretty, you know, far from reach. That's incredible considering how busy you are that you manage to implement so many aspects of Ayurvedic and yoga practice mm -hmm. into your daily life. And I think that's an encouragement to all of our viewers that no matter how busy you are, you can still bring in tiny little things that can yeah. be amazing tools in bringing us back into center and feeling in tune with our body. Right. It doesn't have to be a 90-minute practice. It can be a 9-minute practice. It can be a 90-second practice. And for me, those practices are spread throughout the day. And I think it's the most important thing because if we practice only on the mat in the morning and then we get off the mat and forget about practice, then it doesn't have that much of a positive effect if we right. keep remembering to practice throughout the day. Yes. So it becomes more of a tool versus an object that we need to accomplish. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for this reminder. So all those practices that you do on a daily living, how do you think they affected your life? If you didn't have any of those practices, how do you think your life would be different? Well, I think I would probably be something like the Tasmanian devil, which is <laughs> sort of the analogy I use for that sense of vata derangement, right? When we are spinning and spinning and dirt is shaking off of us and we are incomprehensible and ready to collapse at any moment. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it's a good... Sometimes when you practice something for a long time, it's hard for us to realize how much of an effect it has on our daily life. And only when it's taken out from our life, we realize how much good it's actually bringing to us. Yes. So mm -hmm. I think in general for people to realize that all this spinning, all this nervous en energy can be grounded with practices versus pills is a very empowering knowledge. Well, it is, and, and it's like our daily life, you know, and our habits, the things that we choose to do again and again, they have a very strong medicinal effect. Yes, mm -hmm. habits is medicine, I like that. Habits are medicine, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. how do you see yoga and Ayurveda fit into the life of a modern person? We kind of started talking about how you as a modern, modern person implement that. But how would you see a person who is a newbie to Ayurveda and yoga start implementing it? Well, one of the things I think is amazing is if we consider right now at this period of time in history, the practices of both yoga and Ayurveda are more accessible than they have been at any other time in, you know, as we know, right? Yeah. And more people are practicing or implementing or bringing yoga and Ayurveda in some way into their lives than ever have. And the thing that... I always remember or try to impart to people is you don't have to go live in a cave or wear orange or do anything like that to, to bring these practices in. And often they can be done very, very simply. We can start out by drinking a cup of hot water with lemon or lime or a little bit of honey in the morning as a way to clear off the night before, to detoxify, to start fresh. We could do something like breathe. We could do something like look at our tongue and scrape our tongue. We could do something like drink Tulsi tea. Sometimes one habit can be enough to shift our experience of the world and allow our body to have a little bit more resilience in terms of handling stress. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the truest gift of these practices is that they help strengthen our resilience and our resolve and help us to manage all of the things that we have to juggle in our lives. So it can be one thing. You know, sometimes people think, oh, I'm taking this on, I'm going to practice Ayurveda, I have to learn Sanskrit, I have to eat Indian food, I have to incorporate these things into my life. No, it can be one thing. It can be one simple, one simple thing that helps us start to find our center. Yeah, and I really like that simplicity, that approachability that Ayurveda has, that one little thing can make a big difference. Yes. And you don't need to learn everything before you start right. implementing something. Right. So if some, somebody who, who have maybe some knowledge of Ayurveda or yoga, think of implementing one thing and start building that medicinal habit, what do you think they should start with? 
Well, I think it also depends on where what they're already incorporating into their lives. Because we were just talking about this, one thing I'd suggest is a cup of hot water in the morning. Hot water with lemon or hot water with lime or hot water with a pinch of honey or even just plain hot water. That's something that, that helps cleanse and detoxify as well as rejuvenate. Another thing would be to look at how we encourage good sleep. So whether it is doing a short meditation before sleep, doing a breathing exercise before sleep, turning off all the lights before sleep, um, taking some time between watching TV and going to sleep. You know, in Ayurveda, the three pillars of health are food, which includes water and that hot water as well. Sleep, you know, the sleep is such a cornerstone of our health and our use of energy, how we are replenishing and nourishing ourselves throughout the day. And use of energy also includes our movement practice. You know, stagnation is the enemy of good health and how we move throughout the day really does make a difference. So whether we're walking or practicing yoga or tai chi or qigong or biking or walking our dog or hiking with friends, something that allows things to move through us is another thing that I believe to be important. So again, it depends on where somebody already is. Somebody may be sleeping well, exercising, and already drinking hot water with lemon. And then I might look at, you know, what kind of herbal tea or making sure a person is eating meals at regular times each day. Sometimes we have a tendency in the frenzy of our everyday lives to skip meals and that throws our body out of balance. Yeah, so I really like you approach things in terms of start where you are, look mm -hmm. what you're doing or what mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. you're doing, and then choose one thing that will make the most difference at the least expense. Yes. Yeah, because we can take all the herbs in the world, but if we're not sleeping well, yes. then it doesn't land in the body with as much ease. We could take all the herbs in the world, but if our food and our nutrition isn't good, then again, we don't digest as well. We could take all the herbs in the world, but if we're you know, going to raves every single night and not rejuvenating <laughs> ourselves, or we can take all the herbs in the world, but if we sit 12 hours a day at a desk without getting any exercise, it, it also throws us out of balance. So it is important to think about that one thing or those things that can start to help us find our center and to reconnect with that center again and again. And what I'm also hearing is that it's important to get honest with yourself in terms yes. of what is that that might be pulling you down. So it's not right. necessarily adding things on top that are good according to some standards, but being honest about what is not right, what habit might be worth letting go of in your present life. Well, that's an important thing to look at. And one of the things that I often talk about with people when I'm teaching or working with people or writing or on Twitter is compassionate honesty. How are we compassionate with ourselves and yet simultaneously honest? And it's a practice we go through again and again. And I have to work out it every single day. Some days it's, it's something that I have to kind of sit down with myself or I'm not perfect or I have to do the practices to bring myself back to center. I think the thing also to remember is even after years of practice it's still it's we still have to choose the habits and sometimes we're not going to be ayurvedically perfect and that's okay too it's being compassionate with ourselves and then bringing ourselves back yeah that's a great one mm -hmm. um, so since you've been working with yoga and ayurveda for such a long time and yoga and ayurveda can be such a powerful combination together have you seen any interesting, inspiring stories of people uh, getting better or letting go of the habits that were pulling them down? Was something that really struck you in terms of your practice? Hmm. Well, you know, there's, there's so many things, right? It's like when we think about Ayurveda and when we look at the body in terms of energetics, mm -hmm. like for example, I had somebody um, that years ago I worked with for a long time who had MS and found that heat was something that exacerbated her symptoms or her you know her negative experience and just learning cooling breathing techniques something that she could do even when she went to a baseball game with her family or even in the hot day in the middle of the summer if they were at a picnic could actually change her experience and I think we can look at you know big miracle cures or we can look at things where we have the power to change our experience very quickly and we have the power to focus our attention very quickly and one of the things that I think is underestimated sometimes is the use of the breath in that way and and the use of the breath helps us to 
change our experience so then we actually can utilize other things whether it is you know focusing to say take herbs or incorporate herbs or spices into our life or teas or so on also you know one of the very simple but yet profound remedies that i love in ayurveda is cumin coriander fennel tea and this is something that many practitioners talk about and dr dr vasant ma loves and one of my teachers alakananda devi loves or alakananda ma and the simplicity of making cumin coriander fennel tea and how it can help clear up our tongue and strengthen our digestive fire and allow us to feel a greater sense of balance or you know another simple example is i was with a friend recently and she was having a very busy day and running around a lot and ended up eating a lot of different kinds of raw food during the day that exacerbated um a vata imbalance with all and the running around with all the running around and all the travel and all the talking and all the going from one part of la to another and one of the things that helped reverse that was just drinking a cup of hot tea Right? We forget, too, the healing power of a cup of hot tea and just even the steam and the smell and the aroma of the spices and the herbs and the power of the kitchen herbs. Or, you know, I had a conversation this just recently with somebody who was utilizing some Ayurvedic herbs in her life, turmeric. And turmeric is traditionally used in Ayurveda accompanied by black pepper, right? The black pepper helps potentiate and strengthen the power of the turmeric. And she said she was taking one preparation of turmeric that didn't have black pepper, and then she was taking another one that did, and she noticed it worked better. And and she was commenting, oh, you know, it, it made such a difference, and now I know why. I know why, because there is that sense of the black pepper, the, the heating power of the black pepper, and it's and that's its traditional use. So we also have to remember, I think, what are the traditional uses in Ayurveda that really do make a difference? Like, you know, there's research studies that show how important black pepper is to strengthen the medicinal power of turmeric. So I could go on the rest of the day and tell stories, but those are just a few of the simple yet interesting and profound things that come to my mind. And I really like that you know um, mentioned fennel, coriander, cumin tea. Yeah. It's such a great formulation. And you guys, if you're interested, you can make your own, just get spices, or you can Fortunately for us, now there are so many companies that produce right. products like that. They can actually buy already pre-made ones. Mm-hmm. So that makes it so much easier for us when you're running. Right. Just like we can buy Tulsi tea in, in bags and not have to grow it ourselves. Although I do love giving away Tulsi seeds. It's one of my favorite things. Or, you know, the other another Ayurvedic tool that's useful is a tongue scraper, right? That yeah. sense of gently, of course we don't want to overdo it, but gently scraping the tongue in the morning also to encourage detoxification and freshness and, you know, entering our day, you know, the that sense of entering our day with freshness and clarity and new beginnings because that's what each day is. Yeah, so you basically just gave us a list of uh, Ayurveda gift guide. Um, right. It's something that you can give to your friends if you're practicing mm-hmm. Ayurveda that will help them to be healthy. So guys, right, and don't forget in the gift guide some nose oil, nasya oil, yes. which is not one of my favorite gift guide items. I've gotten so many of my friends hooked on nose oil. I love that. And mm-hmm. uh, most of the stuff you can find on Benny and Botanical's website. So mm-hmm. make sure to check it out. So as a farewell message to our listeners, um, do you have one thing that you would encourage people to do, whether they practice yoga and Ayurveda, whether they're learning it, or if it's just something that they hear and they can implement tomorrow? Well, there's, there's two things that come to my mind. One is, you know, and this relates to a little bit of compassion and honesty, mm-hmm. is that whenever you incorporate or add a new habit to your life, um, I think it's important not to feel that we have to do it, you know, 180% because the day that we miss, we will end up being hard on ourselves. John Duyard speaks about this beautifully when he talks about the 80% rule or, you know, I think about doing something five out of seven days. You know, if you skip a day, it's okay. You can come back you can definitely come back to it you can come back to your routine you can come back to that focus another thing would be even if you think you don't have 60 minutes or 90 minutes to engage in a full yoga practice even three poses even one pose even one breath 
can have a powerful effect on the body. So remember to just practice even if it is a small amount. And then to give yourself permission to start playing around with herbs and spices. You know, to add different kinds of spices to food, to experiment with teas that you might not have tried before, to try chewing fennel seeds after a meal, or to do something that maybe you hadn't necessarily incorporated in your life, but to just give it a try. Thank you so much, Felicia. Mm-hmm. Thank you for mm-hmm. being with us. If people want to find out more about your work and your magazine, where can they find you? Okay, you can go to layoga.com, L-A-Y-O-G-A.com, and um, you can find out a lot about what we do in the yoga community. We also have Find Bliss, you know, which gives information to people about finding their bliss. It's also one of the magazines I run, so F-I-N-D-B-L-I-S-S. And then My Yoga Teaching can be found on Yoga Glow, Y-O-G-A-G-L-O, yogaglow.com. Yeah, classes are amazing. Oh, thank you. And I have a whole archive of classes that incorporate Ayurvedic principles as well. Thank you so much, Felicia. Guys, make sure to check out Felicia's classes on Yoga Glow and to watch all other interviews that we have with other Ayurvedic experts. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Nice to spend this time with you. Bye. Mm-hmm.